OK, welcome. Um, I'm going to take you through AC 3.2 or a part of it. And AC 3.2 looks at the contribution of agencies to achieving social control. And in this part or in this PowerPoint, I'm going to look at how agencies um, use tactics and measures to achieve social control. And the tactic and measure I'm going to look at today, it's on the syllabus, is SEPTED. So SEPTED stands for Crime Prevention Through Environmental Control. So it's how you change the environment in order to either prevent crime or deter criminals, same thing, from committing crime. So it focuses on tactical design and the built environment. So now increasingly when town planners meet, city planners meet, or architects um, are building, uh, let's say, a new office complex or a new school, first and foremost, they will be thinking about how the design of that town, that shopping centre, that school can uh, deter crime. So the main objective is to remove or reduce the opportunity of crime in an environment and also at the same time to encourage people to be out and about, to positively interact with each other, use the space um, so that at the same time people themselves are looking out for what's going on in the environment and potentially can spot anything that might be a crime, report it or prevent it in the first place. It's encouraging legitimate users of a space. Um, and I've put a little link into this PowerPoint. Obviously, if you're watching this on YouTube, you're not going to be able to access it, but at least you can see the link. Um, it's quite a good little clip. It's about 10 minutes long, and it's two police officers in America taking you through some of the little ideas on environmental design that can be used. But I'm going to go into this into a little more detail now. So the important thing to also remember before we go any further is that SEPTED is a preventative, it's a proactive model, it's not a reactive one. So if you, you can try and introduce SEPTED later on into a design, but in general I think SEPTED um, proponents would argue that it needs to be right at the beginning, and we'll deal with that again a little later on in more detail. So supporters of SEPTED would argue that as I said a moment ago, benefits are optimised when the strategies apply to the earliest possible stage of design, because that way you can take all um, ideas into consideration. You can factor in all possible nuances. Again, SEPTED proponents also argue that you don't use SEPTED alone as your method of crime prevention but you work in conjunction with other uh, methods of uh, crime convention, social, environmental, community-based strategies can all be employed. So the principles of SEPTED, crime prevention through environmental design, are based on anticipating the thought processes of potential criminals and offenders and creating an environment that discourages them following through with those thought processes. So someone may go out, a criminal may go out intending, let's say, to shoplift, but the that's their thought process. But the environmental design of the shop makes it so that when they enter the shop, they look around and realise that if they do shoplift, it is likely they are going to get caught due to the design of the shop. Therefore, that discourages them from following through with their plan to shoplift. Hopefully that makes sense. It's also got the added advantage of creating a sense of security and well-being among employees and tenants of the shop or the area where people live. So when it's put into practice, SEPTA proponents would argue that the environment, the buildings, the surroundings discourage or impede criminal behaviour, but at the same time have the reverse effect of encouraging honest citizens to keep a watchful eye out. And there are four basic principles of SEPTED, and they are that you encourage natural surveillance in your designs, natural access control in your designs, territorial reinforcement in your designs, 
and maintenance in your designs. Now what I'm going to do and the last part of this PowerPoint is take you through these four principles of SEPTED with some examples so you fully understand them and you can then use these examples if you get a large question in the exam on SEPTED. So let's start with natural surveillance. Obviously criminals don't like to be recognised so they choose situations to commit their crimes where they can easily hide, they can easily escape. Okay. So by putting in natural surveillance, what you're doing is making it harder for them to hide and harder for them to escape. So sim simple things like keeping areas well lit, ensuring that entrances are bright at all times, ensuring that there's a clear line of sight from both inside and out is going to deter a potential criminal. That's what we mean by natural surveillance. Eliminating hiding spots. Septed's very much into cutting down hedges that block views, removing big bushy trees, bushes, fences, large bins in America, big dumpsters that people can hide behind. Anything that creates blind spots or hiding places, you eliminate from your design. If you are going to have bushes, etc., there are things you can see through. Or, alternatively, if it's around the side of a building, right by windows, etc., SEPTA would encourage using low thorny hedges around windows because they don't obstruct views. At the same time, it's not a comfortable hiding place for someone, uh, a criminal, to hide in. So um, they will. Uh, you, if, if you see SEPTA design in action, quite often you get very thorny bushes around windows. Natural surveillance, really important. Um, again, obviously closed circuit TV uh, will be used in this um, principle of SEPTED. So the idea that um, if you haven't got areas that you can view, and obviously in a shop, for instance, where there's lots of different aisles with good stacked high, that prevents you from keeping an eye on people at all times uh, naturally. So what you do is you put CCTV camera in. And SEPTED, as well as encouraging the use of CCTV cameras, got that wrong, CCTV cameras, also encourages the use of actually putting monitors up in public areas so visitors actually know that they're being watched. And they would argue that the last thing a criminal wants when they walk into a building is to see their own face on security monitor, because they know that then if they commit a crime, they will be recognised, their identity will be known. So here you can see, you know, in a shop, I think it's in America, you know, great big TV camera that shows every single aisle. So as you walk in, any potential criminal knows that if I try and commit a crime in this shop, I am going to be on TV. Simple as that. So the result is your potential offender feels, yep, yeah, they're being watched. And of course, the surroundings offer no easy escape routes. That's the plan. Natural access control is the idea that you try and take the feeling away from criminals that they're in control and instead you're controlling them in terms of how they access or egress out of a building. Um, so you clearly mark approaches to buildings, you channel people into defined areas and, um, you know, things like the use of maze entrance, which we see here in public lob lobbies. I mean, it's not going to stop a potential um, bank robber from um, from uh, accessing the um, the teller or the cashier. But you, if someone's barging through those uh, those maze entrances, you're going to know they're up to no good. So it will give the jump on that person. So again, your goal there is to cut off straight line access to a potential target. You know, those tension barriers there have to be jumped or navigated around. That discourages criminals. And I've got some other examples here of natural um, landscape control. Quite often, curbing and landscape and landscaping to direct automobile and foot traffic into a controlled visible area um, is used in SEPTED principles. So here we can see um, recently we've had a spate of where terrorists 
have been using you know automobiles vans lorries etc at great speed driving onto pavements etc or into crowds of people well here these sort of big planters or bollards or concrete benches while uh, encourage people to use the space to sit down to enjoy the space and by encouraging people to do that people are on the lookout but at the same time you're trying to drive a great big lorry onto that pavement there um, you're going to struggle because these planters are going to be in the way and when Arsenal built their Emirates Stadium Septed was the principal was there as well this huge concrete sign that says Arsenal is deliberately placed in front um, off the road in front of a large area where fans congregate and there's no way that anyone's going to be driving a car or a van through those massive concrete Arsenal signs. So the thought behind that um, Arsenal sign with just the seven letters of Arsenal up there in concrete was not just to show that this is the stadium of Arsenal, but also it's there for Septed. It's a, it's a tool to stop terrorists mowing down um, large groups of people using automobiles, um, vans, lorries, etc. So that's what we mean by natural access control. You're controlling the access people have to areas. Territorial reinforcement is another key principle. And all that means is that you, in your design, you create a clear distinction between what is a public area and what's private property. And that way, the legitimate occupants have a sense of ownership of their private property and will notice and are encouraged to challenge people who clearly don't belong there. Intruders, on the other hand, don't fit in and struggle to blend in. So again you have signs up saying private property you have clear lines of designation so that people are aware you know where public areas end and where private areas start that's the thinking behind it. and again with territorial reinforcement uh, we've got examples of things like making sure that receptionists have clear sight lines to all entrances and, and, and the ability to quickly and discreetly call for help. So here you see this desk is set out, the person coming in, there's your set line, there's, there's your sight line, there's your entrance, long way away, clear glass can easily be viewed. But at the same time, as people walk in, what they can't see are the phones, the security cameras, the telecom, everything else that is behind the desk. Uh, so, you know, the panic alarm button, etc., that could call the central station, that signals an alarm light etc it's all there in the building at the same time you also ensure that you have clear signs and signals out you know authorized personnel restricted area so you are reinforcing that territory there you go clear security signage visible at all entrances and of course, as well with territorial enforcement, the use of visitors' badges, making sure that all visitors not only are wearing a badge, but are escorted around any building. Certainly at Plimstock School, where I teach, uh, visitors have to report to reception. Uh, they have to wear, they are issued with a badge, just like the one we've got here, and uh, are collected by staff and have to be with staff at all times as they move around the building. And staff will see them off site as well. So what's the result of those um, that territorial reinforcement, visitor badges, etc.? Well, employees have got a feeling that this is my space, I own it, and intruders are immediately put on the defensive. And finally, we look at maintenance. Maintenance is key, and it's related to this aspect of territorial reinforcement, but People argue that a well-maintained area sends the message that people notice and care about what happens in that area. And that discourages vandalism and discourages other crimes. But of course, you have security practitioners who refer to, and I've got an example of it here, broken windows theory. The idea that if you have one broken window and don't deal with it, that will entice vandals to break another. And then what gradually happens, that vandalised area then becomes more inviting to higher levels of crime. So SEPTED advocates that you keep your property very well maintained as a matter of safety as well as a matter of pride. And quite frankly, you know, if 
you wanted would you want to rent something from compass properties just looking at the state of that building no you wouldn't lastly final slide we look at target hardening and this is the idea um, that you simply make a, more, a building more difficult to forcibly enter. So that is like the use of dead bolts in doors to make it more difficult for people to come in. Or, or uh, the use of uh, film, uh, window film on um, plate glass. So um, if you put plate glass windows in and then put a film over that plate glass window, it makes it um, almost impossible for people to smash that glass, and then grab stuff from behind it because the plate glass can actually, as you see there on the picture, stop a sledgehammer when it's um, when the film is applied. So that's what SEPTED is. It's about thinking about how you change your environment or you design your environment to prevent crime from happening to deter criminals from committing a crime in that area and for also giving the people in that area ownership of the area so they at the same time are looking out for criminals thereby preventing crime from happening i hope that was useful